Hello and welcome. Today we've got Tim Anderson here who's worked in the health and industry for almost 20 years. Uh, Tim has had several best-selling books, Original Strength, Habitual Strength, Pressing Reset, Becoming Bulletproof, amongst many more. Tim has learnt and worked with some of the, the greats from the industry and is a great resource of some very unique information that I believe more people need to to learn about. Tim also runs a successful certification program for trainers and coaches. Uh, I'm extremely excited to have, have Tim on the podcast here today. So welcome, Tim. Hey, Adam. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Just to lighten the mood a little bit, I uh, always ask my, my guests this at the, the beginning, what, what is one of the s stupidest or silliest or most embarrassing things you've ever done? Perhaps it was in the, the beginning of your career. Um, any stories are, are welcomed here? Oh, man. Um, I don't know, Adam. I've done a lot of stupid things. Uh, <laughs> um, I, uh, well, one time, and I, this was kind of at the beginning of my career, I had on sweatpants uh, and I was going to work out um, and I was in a crowd of people and I thought that I had on shorts underneath my sweatpants. And uh, so I was going to take my sweatpants off and get started. But, and when I did, um, people were staring at me funny and then one guy just <laughs> straight up asked me, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> and I looked down and I wasn't wearing shorts. Uh, um, so that was, that was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, awesome. I'm glad we got that out of the way. Uh, so for people who, who might not uh, have heard of you before, can you just give us a bit of a history on how you started your career and and your natural sort of progressions of what, what's, what's taken you to where you are now? Oh, man. Um, so I became a personal trainer back in 1998. Um, and I, I kind of Fortunately for me, I kind of fell into that because uh, I was given the opportunity to leave my job when it got taken over by a much larger company. <laughs> so I found myself working at a health club, um, kind of got into uh, kettlebell training, and um, I really loved it. And But I loved it so much that I started developing overuse injuries. And then I started learning about corrective exercises to try to get out of, uh, to try to get out of pain. Uh, and then I kind of learn how to chase my tail around chasing, chasing pain. Um, and so what happened is, is I, 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 I befriended, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of John Brookfield, but he is the father of the battling ropes. Um, so he, he created uh, exercise with ropes basically. Yeah. But uh, I was thinking about him one night and he had told me that he pretty much developed uh, rope training because he was trying to, um, to build work capacity, uh, to, to, to break some world records in the Guinness book of world records. And he said that he came across rope training by just asking God to train the best way to train, to develop work capacity. So I was kind of frustrated one night because I wasn't getting out of pain. I was just, um, just, just starting to feel fragile. Um, and so I sat down, um, thinking about what John did and I asked God to show me how to train to be uh, bulletproof. And within, uh, within two weeks, I picked up a child developmental, uh, development book on learning disorders. And, um, I, I just, I discovered how powerful rolling and crawling on the floor, um, can be. And that's, that's really how, how all this started, um, or how original strength started. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And, and how did you sort of initially, I mean, it's, you, you sound like you just fell into to the right hands. You're in the right place at the right time to be given ah. such valuable information. Do, do you put it down to you were sort of open to learning those sort of teachings? Because, I mean, not everyone, when they hear those those sort of uh, things, is, is sometimes quite closed-minded to, to different ways like that. How, how do you think you, you arrived at that and, and sort of remained open to that? I think... Uh, that's a good question. I, I, but I think if somebody is frustrated enough, um, that they're, they're more open to change or, or maybe a, a crazy idea. Um, yeah. and, and it's funny, like when I, the book was, uh, the book I picked up was called smart moves, um, yeah. by Car Carla Hannaford. But when I, I was reading through it, um, I knew how powerful crawling was before I even tried it. That's how, like, I just knew um, and I can't explain it any other way. I just knew that I knew that this was something I needed to do. 
Yeah. And then it's just just like a natural progression. You started obviously getting results and then that created more buy-in for you to to learn more and and now it's it's led you obviously to your to your successful programs and your books um i've, I've read uh, several of your books and i follow you on social media but i'd like you to explain for for people that perhaps don't have a full understanding of of the principles and and the benefits of of doing the the resets as you as you guys call them um yeah so if you could just touch on that so the idea behind original strength is that your body is made to be strong and healthy and resilient throughout your entire life, even if you're 99 years old or if you're 12 years old, um, and that none of us were created to be frail, fragile, or broken. Um, and all of our bodies are designed to heal. Um, and everybody knows this. We just don't know it, know it. Um, but like when you get cut, your body stops the cut. It stops the bleeding and it starts to develop scar tissue to put you back together. When you get sick, your immune system takes over um, and tries to get rid of the, the bacteria, the virus that's trying to, to make you sick. So and so it kind of makes sense that when you're hurting, your body has what it needs inside of it and it knows what to do to get to get you uh, to get rid of that hurt or that pain. Or if you if you're you have limited mobility or something's going on that should not be there. Um, so when we were all born, we have all of us have a nervous system and and every child was given a movement template that was designed to get it strong enough to stand up on two feet and go explore its world. Well, as adults, we still have that same movement template inside of our nervous system today. And it is, its job is still the same as it was when you were one years old, is to make you strong enough to go explore your world. Um, so we call those movements, um, they're developmental movements, um, just like breathing with your diaphragm, moving your head, uh, gaining head control. Uh, rolling around on the floor, rocking on your hands and knees and, and crawling or contralateral movements like your gait pattern. We call those resets and it is pretty much like pressing a reset button on on a computer or a smartphone or something that's not working right. When, when you press that button, the original operating system kind of reboots and refreshes all the other programs on that are running on top of it and everything just seems to to run better. I guess that's the, the spill of it. Yeah, cool. How quickly have you seen, and you can, you know, talk about your success stories, how quickly have you seen someone come in um, who might not have done those resets or been aware of them at all and, and seen a noticeable difference? Is, is it something that you'd, you'd notice straight away or is it over weeks and months? So one thing I heard a long time ago um, in, a, in a corrective exercise uh, workshop is that change can happen at the speed of the nervous system. And I'm here to tell you that change can actually happen at the speed of the nervous system. So we've seen, um, like personally, right in front of my eyes, I've seen a, a guy in his mid seventies who maybe could only do like a quarter deep squat, uh, squat, butt to calves. And, you know, after, after a breathing exercise, uh, learning how to tap into his diaphragm again within minutes. Yeah. Um, you know, he might, he may not have even squatted that deep in 20 years and may have thought he would never squat that deep again, but, but it was restored to him within minutes. I mean, just stories like that, crazy stories, um, or even people on walkers, uh, that were being assisted with walking that n now today they no longer even need their walkers and, and their weight training and doing other crazy things. Um, you know, living, they're living, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so uh, we've seen change can be very, very immediate. And even, even when you don't see it immediately, that doesn't mean it's not happening also. I've learned that too. Um, for the ones I have seen happen at the blink of an eye, I've also seen others that, well, maybe it took three weeks. But you know yeah. what? If, if a blink of an eye or three weeks, if it gets you where you want to be and it restores your body, it's all good and it's all worth it. Yeah. And, and obviously, what, once, as soon as you get that result, they're, they're going to be hooked on you know, feeling better and staying better for, for longer. Absolutely. Uh, so for there's a chapter in the original strength book. It talks about vestib the vestibular system and what the vis vestibular system does. So could you just explain what the vestibular system is and why it's important uh, that some of those resets are, are centered and based around uh, that system? Oh man, I will never do this justice, but I will say that the vestibular <laughs> system is kind of like the star of you. I mean, it's the star of the show and every it, it's more than your balance system. Um, all the information your body generates 
and receives is routed through your vestibular system. And it's the very first sensory system to develop in, in, a, in a human. Um, it starts 21 days after conception and it's fully developed uh, five months after conception. And what it does is, is one of the things it does is it takes all that information when you're developing and it actually helps build your brain and your nervous system. It makes you you. And as an adult, it takes all that information in and sends it to your brain and so that your brain knows knows what to do and what signals to send back out into the body. Um, and the healthier your vestibular system is, the healthier you are in general. Um, your other sensory systems are routed uh, through it also, your visual system, your proprioceptive system, um, everything but your sense of smell is uh, routed through your vestibular system. Yeah. So what, what are the... Uh would you would you suggest this to someone who might not be in pain as more of like a, a primer for like say an athlete who's um, competing in some some type of event? Would you give these uh, to to obviously build up that sort of propriocept uh, proprioception in the the receptors receptors as well? So you t- are you talking about the resets? Yeah, the the resets. W- would that be part of? Uh, a warm up for not not just uh, just general population and for people who are moving away from stiffness or pain, but for more performance based measures as well. Oh, absolutely! So the beautiful thing about original strength is, or pressing reset, is that if a person has a nervous system, and most of the people I have met actually do have one, um, yeah. <laughs> if, it, if it has has a if a person has a nervous system, resetting um, these movements just make them able to express their potential better. So we've, we've, uh, the cool, we've used this with professional athletes in the NFL, uh, the NBA, um, just, uh, it's amazing. Like, so it, it doesn't have to be somebody that's broken. It can be somebody that is at the top of their game that just wants to, to mil- move and feel better and maybe express more speed, express more power as well. It just gets like a, for athletically, it would be like a, just a, an edge to help you optimize your performance. Yeah. One of the movements in particular that I it really identified with me and I, I still use it quite frequently myself is the the role and the the segmental role that, that you guys taught in the book and just, just that actual movement and how, how great it sort of feels on the thoracic spine, especially if, if you're sort of stressed and you feel uptight. Can, can you just explain the, the benefits of a, a role and, and how you actually teach that? Oh man, rolling is, is wonderful. It's probably one of my favorite uh, resets. But um, so rolling, what it does is, well, obviously it uh, stimulates your vestibular system um, and it also stimulates your skin, which uh, your tactile uh, system, which is pretty much kind of your proprioceptive system. So it nourishes your brain through vestibular stimulation and tactile stimulation. So it gives your body a very good movement map but it also connects your hips to your shoulders. It gives nourishment to the joints in your spine because they're made to rotate. Um, and it allows you to, to really learn how to become graceful. Um, so I, I love rolling because one, it feels good and it is very good for your joints and your body and your brain, but man, it, it will allow you to, um, I call it moving like poetry. Um, if you can, if you spend time on the floor, the more you roll, the more, graceful you get and you start rolling piece by piece by piece where your one part of your body just pulls another part of your body along and it's effortless like it takes no effort whatsoever and it's hard to really understand that until you see people try to roll like say if you watch an adult roll that hasn't been on on the floor in like 20 years it looks like it takes a whole lot of effort their face gets real red they hold their breath they're straining they're not piece by piece they look like a a big log or a tree um, or an accident either way Um, It's not, it doesn't look like poetry, but the cool thing is your brain and your nervous system is so, so amazing that if you do spend time on the floor, even if you are, it does take a lot of effort initially, eventually all the right connections are made in your nervous system and it becomes effortless. And then to me, it's, it's important because it transfers over to how you move and feel when you're up off the ground, when you're on your feet, living your life. Yeah, I, absolutely. I tell people if you can roll like a, a dancer on the floor, you can move like a dancer when you're walking around. Yeah, that's awesome. Some great advice. Now, with I heard you mention before um, about uh, breathing and the importance of, of breathing, and it's it's something I commonly see with a lot of the people that I work with. That you know, you, you're doing some sort of exercise or a warm up, and 
people automatically go into that just fight or flight sympathetic hold their breath when they're just doing some sort of basic movement can, can you talk about the importance of of sort of diaphragmatic breathing and the, the mechanics of that so all of us obviously um the first movement we ever make when we come into the world is breathing and coincidentally it's also the last movement we'll ever make when we leave the world um so we all know how to breathe or we're all designed to breathe because we, we need to to live but we can uh, a lot of adults especially in america uh, we have stressed out lives and we learn how to breathe up in our neck and our chest um, so we don't use our diaphragm which actually fills the lungs up from the bottom to the top and air is funny it can fill the lungs up from the top to the bottom or just fill up the lungs in the top so if we don't use our diaphragm to actually pull air all the way down to the bottom of the lungs um, we're, we're really short chaining ourselves. So breathing with the diaphragm is not just about, uh, oxygen, getting in oxygen to the blood. Um, it is so much more than that. It is actually your center, like your center stabilizing muscle that, that makes your inner core unit, everything work the way it's supposed to. Like if you breathe with your diaphragm properly, chances are your pelvic floor is going to be functioning properly. Your multifidi around your spine are going to be functioning properly. Your transverse abdominis. And there's a good chance though, if you're not breathing with your diaphragm well, none of those other things are working optimally either because I, the diaphragm is kind of like the captain of the inner core uh, muscles. It, so it really makes you solid from the center and allows you to build strength from the center out. And without it, we're kind of hollow and we're more, I, I say hollow, it's just an expression, um, but we're more vulnerable to injury because um, we're, we don't have that, our center's not connected. So basically, breathing with your diaphragm connects your center. And that's just physically. There's so much more it does on the hormonal uh, level, like fight or flight, adrenaline, cortisol versus rest and digest, being able to, to metabolize your food and recover well. Um, so it's, it's, it's insanely important. Yeah. And how, how would you assess that if you, if you had a client come to you and then what would be the steps that you'd get someone, just, just some real simple uh, guidelines to, to perhaps people who are listening that might not have heard of this before because I know not everyone has, has read this sort of stuff. What, what would be the steps to assess and then understand and where would you take them initially? As a, as a trainer, um, it's kind of easy. Well, you get used to it. Uh, when some, when a new client comes into you, uh, you can tell if they're breathing up in their neck or chest or not in their necks, all real veiny. Um, uh, <laughs> um, but what the easiest way I like to do, um, is, is I just lay people down on the floor and, um, I kind of just kind of distract them and talk to them a little bit and watch what, how they're breathing. And then I ask them to take really big breaths to see really if they really wanted to fill up their lungs, how would they do it? Um, and what you might see in that instance is that maybe their chest, really, their rib cage gets really, really huge, but their stomach never moves. Um, so they might be filling up their lungs, taking a really deep, deep breath with their accessory or their emergency breathing muscles, but they've never really even tapped into their diaphragm to its potential yet. Um, and then, you know, you might see somebody fill their belly up from the bottom and then watch the Watch it rise all the way up into the chest, and that's very good. Um, if you, if you somebody just listening, they could just uh, easily uh, lie down on the floor and put their hand one hand on their belly, one hand on their chest, and take a deep breath and see which hand is moving first, or at all, or you know, um, sometimes both hands don't move. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, or, but that's that's a simple thing they could do to see if they were breathing with yeah. their. And, and just to, because it's almost sort of semi-related, do you, do you practice yourself or are you an advocate of sort of mindfulness practice practices where you meditate or just breathing exercises in general? Uh, so in the beginning, I definitely, for myself, I had to, I had to practice it. Now I'm much more uh, conscious of how I breathe and I don't have to practice it as deliberately because I've gotten the reps in where my nervous system is efficient at breathing, um, deep down into my belly. And, and it's the same thing when you were a child, the first three months of your life, you probably accumulated 7 million deep diaphragmatic breaths. That's a very efficient nervous system. So, you, and you didn't have to think about it at all. It's just what you did. So yeah. the more we get in the reps with the breathing, the less we have to think about it again and, until we just don't. So I really don't as much now, but I do have every one of my clients uh, and people I work with 
I will have them spend five to 10 minutes, you know, of deliberate breathing practice every day. Is, is there like a, a protocol? Do you do the box breathing? Do you do like a four in um, one hold and then five out? Or is, it, is, there, is there a specific number you'd, you'd use with your clients and, and trainers you work with? This is where I get um, maybe uh, maybe weird, um, but I, I don't because I try to go for the most natural route possible because that's what we're designed to do. Um, so a breath should almost be without any kind of thought. It should just be in and then relax and let it come out. So the biggest rule I give people is try to close your mouth, put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, and try to breathe in and out through your nose while you pull air deep down into your belly. Now, that's easy to say. <laughs> but it's not easy for people to do. So it may be that, you know, in original strength, we teach regressions or smaller parts of, of a movement. It may be that we have to change their position um, because everybody's different. So we may just have to change the position they're in for them to easily find their diaphragm. And then once we find it and they're able to pull air into their belly, then we just have them work it in that position. And then we start to venture out later to, to bigger positions. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's awesome. And, and what you just touched on then how individuals some people work better in different situations it's not a a one size fits all um, oh, i think that's definitely that's not <laughs> certainly powerful uh and good 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 to hear coming from you i've i've heard you speak before about uh, rotational strengths and and why it's important um, and I sort of, I've done a lot of reading and research myself in this area and I incorporate incorporate into a lot of the coaching that i do but I believe it's one area that a lot of coaches sort of neglect and, and trainers and, and general populations neglect. So what, what are the benefits of, of using uh, uh, rotational strength and trying to develop that in, in our training? Oh, um, I, do you mean um, from, a, from a reset standpoint or a, a much bigger movement standpoint? Well, yeah, for, from the from the ground up. So, in terms of the the resets, but uh, for example, like with your like, if you're familiar with the FMS screen, how you yes. do rotary stability, and you're assessing for that, and then how you build on that. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be around that. It can be to do with the resets, but j just your your philosophy on that. So, uh, again, so that kind of takes me back to rolling. Uh, rolling is what connects your opposite shoulders to your opposite hips. So, so we're breathing tight, makes the center very solid. Rolling starts to, to create, connect the X, so to speak, the body's an X. So now we've got a solid center through breathing and head control. And then we get into rolling and we start to tie the shoulders to the hips to allow us to generate power and force and to allow us to sprint without getting hurt. So rotational stability uh, gets to be huge because it's really, it's the foundation of our gait pattern. And it's what keeps us tied together when we walk and run. And you can see like, like if you ever go to the mall or the airport and you watch people walk around, you can see those that have great rotational stability. And then, then those that don't like, there's a lot of excessive uh, rotation and twisting and it just looks kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's just not, it's not pretty. Um, yeah, so it stands out, right. It's not graceful. So it, so it kind of stands out because there's a lot of excess rotation going on there because they, they're not strong enough to, to kind of, keep their body in the line or straight. And, and it's, and some people call it anti-rotation rotate. It is all strength and rotation though. Um, and like, so the spine's made to rotate and there's all these forces and you have your sling system, your, that is, that is to, designed to make you very efficient when you walk and there should not be a lot of excessive movement. And that's a good sign to see if somebody's tied together well, but, but generally, man, it just, it kind of, it kind of bulletproofs you when you have good rotational strength, you're, you're a lot less likely to get injured. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, ch changing gears a little bit. There's a, there's a video of you. I did did a Google uh, before we came on, and there's a video of you doing a, a one mile uh, Spider Man crawl. For I believe it, you did you did it in uh, 45 minutes. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of views on that. It's quite quite an interesting uh, video. But you you looked like you uh, you finished the one mile. Uh, Spider-Man crawl and you could have gone for another another two. C can you just tell us the story and, and how you came about to do that? And um, yeah. So that was 44 minutes in one second. And okay. <laughs> I don't want to get that one wrong. I don't either. I don't want to ever have to do that again. Um, so 
I, you know, it was weird. Um, my friend, so I told you John Brookfield, uh, he created the Battling Ropes. He's one of my mentors and he is, to me, there's no better resource for uh, mental strength training um, than John um, and, and work building work capacity. So, and most everything I've learned and, and that I've done in that area has been because of John. Well, one day he's like, you know, Tim, I bet you could crawl a mile. And he's very gentle in how he gets you to do stuff. He's like, I bet you could do it. And then uh, I was like, huh, maybe I can. And uh, so, <laughs> and then it started just kind of churning in my head. I was like, man, that seems like a long ways, but I bet I could do it. I, I've i crawled for a lot. You know, I used to crawl. I crawl for time. It can't be that much different. Let me tell you, crawling for distance is a lot different than just crawling for time or vice versa. They're not the same. Um, but anyway, so I went out to the track one day and and I did it. And it took me 55 minutes and it was exhilarating because I, I mean, man, it was hard, but I, I never got up. I never stopped. And I was very, I just felt like I, and it's crazy, right? Cause who cares? Um, but, <laughs> but I felt like I did something that was almost amazing. And so I told John and he's like, yeah, um, that's good. I knew you could do it, but really you need to have that on tape probably. <laughs> <laughs> After you'd already put yourself through that. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> 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 it's like well you know it's probably something that would be good to have on tape and i was like man i don't i really don't want to ever do that again because <laughs> because <laughs> it was horrible um so so a couple of weeks later i was thinking about it and i was like well i, I could probably do it again and, and it'd be on tape and maybe it'll be neat uh so i went out there i got one of my clients to videotape it it was like 5 5 30 in the morning and there wasn't a, so it was nobody was out there until I got started, of course. Um, and <laughs> I had my ear pods in, I was ready to go. I was just going to distract my mind and, um, just, I was just going to crawl. So I got to crawl and the videotape was going and I was, I was not even a fourth of the way around the track when I realized that I never cut my podcast on and it was just <laughs> me, me and my miserable thoughts. <laughs> and I told, I told like, man, it was just me and God. I had nobody to talk to, but, <laughs> and, and, and it, if crawling a mile will make you pray especially if you're trying to do it in, in like make it look good in its own camera. Um, and, um, so I, I did it again and, uh, it was funny cause there were people out there at, after a while. I mean, it took 44 minutes. So some people started coming to the track to walk their dogs and their kids and just, just to, to exercise in general, but nobody wanted to make eye contact with me, um, except for the kids. So they yeah. would walk, they would walk by me uh, or, um, cause I wasn't crawling by them. I wasn't that fast. Uh, so, but when they would walk by me, they would turn their head. Like they didn't, they didn't want to make eye contact. So it was, it was, it gave me something to laugh about while I was crawling. And what, what was the feeling in terms of fatigue? Was there, was it the cardiovascular? Were you feeling the, the shoulders or the belly or the, what, what, was there any point, like, obviously you were tired, like it's, it's an extreme uh, distance to do, but what, what areas were hurting? So to be, to be really honest, um, when that, that time, the second time, um, cause after the first time, everything is easier after you do something the first time that day, uh, the only thing that was tired was my brain. Um, because it was just mentally, it was a challenge to, to go faster because I had my stopwatch on and I knew that I was doing it much faster than I did the first time. So that was exciting to me. So I was trying to mentally push myself to continue to keep that same pace. Um, when I stood up, I was fine and it's crazy, right? Um, but I was fresh. I did that at 5.30 in the morning. I, I did my normal day the rest of the day, plenty of energy. And that's the beautiful thing about crawling is because it's a reset. And yes, you can use it for strength training and it works amazingly well, but it will not break your body down. It doesn't, it doesn't tear, it doesn't tear your nervous system down either. It is constantly, it's kind of, I call it like it just constantly renews your nervous system. So I was really fresh other than the mental torment that it took. Are there, are there any screens that you would run through to, to see if someone's got, you know, structural limitations that, that might impede something like a Spider-Man crawl or, um, is, do you do you go down that sort of clinical path if if you need to sort of problem solve? Oh yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, so in our we have two workshops. Uh, one's called Pressing Reset, and one's called Pro Reset, and it's geared towards professionals. Um, and in that workshop, we actually introduce the original strength screen and assessment. Um, and what we can see is we 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 can see developmentally what a person might be lacking and what their body's ready for or what their body's not ready for. And it helps us know exactly what resets they need 
um, so that we can get them where they want to be so much faster. Yeah. And do you see any correlations between uh, things that they might have neglected when they were younger in terms of if they, you know, walked before they uh, started crawling or just, I think you touched on people with uh, learning difficulties as well. Just sort of interested to see if you've, if you've found any patterns that you can see and physically that they present with later in life. I, we have seen some interesting things. Um, and like, so I, I, I have a client currently right now who did not crawl as a child. Um, and it was amazing that he could not crawl as an adult also. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the, even though he didn't do it, though, the program was still in his nervous system. So after just a little bit of uh, practice, um, getting down on the floor and, and learning, relearning how to crawl, now he can crawl effortlessly and fluidly. Um, and, we, you know, we've seen other people, too, um, that maybe they've skipped. So some people don't crawl forwards. They only crawl backwards. I mean, we're all different again. And, and that can, that shows up too, when, uh, when they get down on the floor, like maybe they, they have a very pretty crawling pattern when they're going backwards, but when they're going forwards, they really don't have much of a crawling pattern to speak of. Um, yeah. so it's just really neat to see how somebody has developed and how it plays off, plays out as they're, they're older. Yeah. So when, when you've, when you've got someone through the, the resets and they're moving well, um, what, what sort of style of training, uh, and philosophies do you, do you follow? Uh, for yourself and and for for like your clients and and what you recommend for for perhaps coaches as well. So I'm 42 now, and I really graduated or gravitated towards um, just natural human movements. So, and I am convinced because I know what the resets do, and now that I'm completely aware of how the body's designed, I I love um, loaded gate pattern movements. Um, to me, that is the the cat's meow as far as really uh, opening up the body's athletic potential or just keeping it resilient and healthy. Yeah. Loading so the gate like pattern. Farmer's walks and that sort of stuff. Yes and no. Um, even so, so yes, I think farmer's walks are tremendous and I love them, those and I do them a lot, uh, all kinds of carries. But I also like to load the gate pattern where all four limbs can freely swing the way they're designed. So it might be that you put a harness on and you're dragging a heavy sled or a chain yeah. or you're crawling, dragging a sled or chain too. Yeah, uh, awesome. And and do you do the the conventional lifts as well? Are you into like the barbell? Of obviously, you're into the kettlebell stuff. Um, but so uh, I do like to. So I'm a big fan of uh, Dan John. Um, yeah. And and his his simple movement philosophies. And so as a, again being in my 40s, I do like loading the gate pattern. Um, but I also like just sticking with very simple movements like a hinge, a push, a pull. Um, yep. whether it's with a barbell body weight or whatever, I will, I do those every day, but I, but like, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with easy strength, but I just try to keep the reps low, um, and the, the load low, um, to just keep my body healthy, and my nervous system efficient so that when I do really need strength, I can just tap into it, but I'm not never, I, my goal is never to break my body down in the pursuit of strength or it's yep. a detriment to me, but only to enhance, to enhance my body. I mean, and that's not, that's, that wasn't my goal when I was younger. Um, but again, I'm, I'm a little bit wiser now than I used to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, and with, with that, like I've, I've seen uh, footage of you, you, you're obviously in uh, good, good condition all the time. What, what uh, nutritional ph philosophies as well um, and your eating, um, what, what are they like? Uh, well, so right now, because, you know, everything's in seasons. Um, but for I've been in this season for a very long time uh, that I love fat um, and I eat a lot of fat, <laughs> yeah. like whether it's uh, butter, meat, uh, fats or meats, um, um, dairy or uh, nuts and stuff. Love avocados. I eat uh, I don't eat a lot of processed carbs, but I also eat what I want. Um, like I'll go through a. I eat dark chocolate every day. I'm always snacking on can, you know, dark chocolate. Um, yeah. And and I love I love coffee uh, with heavy yeah. heavy whipping cream in it. So, like I, and it, it's not maybe it's not a healthy diet, but I, I eat very I I eat a lot of vegetables. Um, I eat lean meats, and I have a lot of fat in my diet, and just very little processed carbs. And yeah. I do play with uh, intermittent fasting. Um, I found that's pretty easy to do. Um, and so I, most of my calories come at night, but, or the last eight hours of the day or six hours a day, depending. Yeah. 
Awesome. Um, could, could you just touch on, we, we spoke about just the workshop, workshops before. Um, I'd just like you to, just to explain a little bit about uh, who the course is uh, suited for and uh, the course structure. I've heard nothing but good things. And at some point, we'll have to get you out to Dubai to, to run one here. Oh, man, that would be awesome. Um, so, so the Pressing Reset workshop is really geared for personal trainers. Um, now, we have a lot of professionals that take it as well, uh, but it's really geared more towards the, the, the personal trainer who's, who's actively training clients um, to try to help them become move better, feel better, and be stronger. Um, we also have the Pro Reset course, which uh, is geared for the, the egghead trainer that just really wants to, like, so in pressing reset, we, we, we tell you how to press reset, and we show you how it works and, and all the different ways you can do it. In pro reset, we tell you why it works. Like we go into the neurology behind what, what's happening in the nervous system in the brain when we do this movement. And why why does it have this effect on the body? And we also go into the physiology of the body and how it's designed to move. And, and then we go into limitations that you might run up against because again, different people present different histories and and things in their body. So we just we really try to equip more of the uh, deeper knowledge. Um, and we also go into the screen and assessment in that course as well. And then we also have a clinical reset course, which is geared for professional uh, therapists um, and doctors, maybe that work uh, with patients that are re rehabilitating from injuries and things like that. Yeah, cool. And how, how would you suggest if, if this is new to, to someone who's listening to this, how, how would you uh, start them in the journey? Where, where do you think, would you get them reading original strength or what's, what's the best place for them to sort of dip their foot in, in this this, uh, your teachings? My man, my, well, that's kind of loaded question, but I, <laughs> if, 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 if your learning style is reading, I would suggest the pressing reset original strength reloaded book. If you're not a reader, I would tell you that, man, we have so many free videos on YouTube. Uh, I don't, there's hundreds of videos that can get you going in the right direction. Um, and then if you, you really want hands on, I would say try to try to go to a workshop so somebody can lay eyes on you and you can feel what it is when you when you you know how, how you're supposed to do it or how you used to do it um, even yeah. as a child. Um, and then my biggest thing, though, for all of that, if you set all of that aside, none of that even matters if you're just not willing to try it. So I, my biggest thing is, is, you know what, just try it. Give it give it 10 minutes a day for heck, do it for two weeks and just see if you feel better. See if you're moving better. Yeah, awesome. What 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 are the more uh, most rewarding parts of your work? I know you you you're a writer. Uh, you write frequently on your blog. You're a teacher. You're a coach. Um, what 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 sort of makes you makes you happy and sort of keeps you motivated to keep doing what you're doing? Man, um, I love you know. Some times you don't know about yourself until you you're in the situations. I have discovered that I do love love teaching. Um, but I think I really like it because of the, to watching the, the expressions and the aha moments that get on people's faces or watching the hope that somebody gets when they rediscover that they haven't lost their ability to move and that it's, it's right there. It's been in, it's been in them the whole time. They just it's had not, to uncover it. It's not too late for them. Yes, it's not too late. So I, I probably though, the most rewarding thing is, is just, uh, man, some really nice people take the time to write letters on the changes that they've experienced and, and these changes are drastic. And, and what happens is, is they start writing about the changes that have happened outside of their body, like with their family or their friends or just, just their whole outlook, everything around them changes when they, yeah. when their body, when they regain their ability to move. I mean, it, it's just been amazing. I, I love yeah, it. It's a huge, huge ripple effect. I mean, you write a book, you know, 10 years ago and someone picks it up and reads it and it, it still can have an effect on, on someone. And, and the, the basically the way how I found out originally about you was I heard you on uh, Scott Ardella's podcast and and that prompted me to, to get your book and then I just started following your stuff. So it's it's powerful to think of uh, just the, the work that you've done has, uh, has had a big effect. Oh, that's awesome. And, and thank you, Scott. Scott's a great guy, man. I, I can't, yeah. I can't think of a, a there, he's, he's top notch for sure. Yeah. No, he's great. I'll have to get him on the, the podcast as well. What's, what are some simple guidelines uh, that people could, could take that, that were 
in say a high stressed uh, corporate position and they they want to get moving again what is something that that they could take just from listening this what would be like you know three or four things that they could they could take away and it can be sort of lifestyle stuff it can be uh you know your, your resets as well um i would say one um you have to be deliberate and intentional if you want something different if you want to change so if if you're living in a very high stress life um you really and even though it doesn't see it may not see you might be so stressed out you you may think you don't have any time you can devote to doing anything to even take care of yourself but give yourself be deliberate and intentional and give yourself mandatory 10 minutes a day just for you um and now inside that 10 minutes you can do a lot of things but i would recommend that you practice uh, deep belly breathing um, learning how to breathe in and out through your nose with your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Oh, by the way, if, if you only learn how to keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth, it would change your life. So, I mean, that may be the simplest place to start. It's a lot easier to put your tongue on the roof of your mouth than it is to find your diaphragm. Um, yeah. But it certainly helps you find your diaphragm. But I, I would start there. And then I would start learning how to move my eyes and my head. Um, and, and what you'll find is, is if you learn how to take let your diaphragm do its job, all the muscles around your neck and your shoulders will probably start to relax and, and let your shoulders drop. And you may discover you have a neck. Apparently my neck's as long as a giraffe and I just didn't know it um, for so long <laughs> until I learned how to breathe. Um, but, but learning how to move your head and then just spending time on the floor rolling around because um, it feels good. And there, I, 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 I say this so many times because it's true. It feels good to feel good. And if you allow your chance, the yourself the opportunity to, to feel good, it it'll kind of keep you going. Um, yeah. And and what happens is if you just take that ten minutes a day and be very deliberate, even though it's only ten minutes, it's it's powerful enough to create a change that you will notice and that will make a huge difference later on in your life, in your day to day life. Yeah, that's awesome. Any any resources because you're obviously uh, quite quite. Uh, knowledgeable in this area, but in terms of the lifestyle aspects and habits and and routines that that you have followed and has influenced your your work and and how you go about your day, but also to how you you would coach someone into a better uh, lifestyle. I'm really partial to the book Habitual Strength, um, mostly because I wrote it, but uh, <laughs> it is all about uh, ha uh, creating habit and living. Life, a lifestyle through the habits that you've created to, to have the body that you want. Um, and the truth is, is we all have the body that we have right now because of the habits that we've created anyway. Um, um, but I, so there's a very simple routines in that and just ideas to get a person going. Um, now from a strength uh, beyond that, I'm a big fan again of Dan John and his work with uh, easy strength for the person that just wants to, to get moving in very short bouts and doesn't want to break their body down. Maybe they do want to lift weights and they, they want to make it, you know, by inches a cinch by, by a, a yard is hard. It's a very gentle, easy way to, to get into weight training um, in a very sensible way that won't break the body down. And again, it helps build up a very efficient nervous system. Um, that, I, Dan is just a wealth of knowledge and all kinds of sensible uh, things you can do. Um, and then I guess from a, a nutrition standpoint, I would say there's a lot of junk out there and there's a lot of mess. And the truth is, is you actually, your lifestyle is going to dictate what's best for you as well. So you just have to, there's always something in the middle. So I would say do your research, um, but know that there's no one way and no one right way that it's not either or it's there's there's there, there can always be something in the middle and for most people it's the something in the middle that matters when it comes to nutrition yeah awesome that, that's some uh, great advice now just touching what what are your sort of personal habits and routines what what, what do you do you're obviously a, a high achiever and someone who's uh, quite busy what what are your non-negotiables each day non-negotiable um coffee i i like to have coffee every day i get up early Chocolate. uh Yes, coffee and chocolate. Chocolate's in the evening, coffee's in the morning. Um, <laughs> I, I get up early and I, I press reset uh, for about 10 minutes and then I go train. And for me, training could be uh, loaded gait patterns, loaded carries. I, I try to do that two or three times a week. Um, and I try to do a very easy strength uh, style, uh, like 
body weight exercises. I try to do like at least 10 pull-ups every day. I, mean, I know big whoop is 10, <laughs> um, but I play with how I do them and I vary the speeds and stuff. I mean, I have fun. I'm, I, I explore and I, I'm trying to be, I try to be curious with how I'm doing things now. Um, so I, I do, you know, uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes worth of easy strength style training with maybe body weight, maybe a bar, maybe a kettlebell, nothing heavy, just stuff to feel good. I want to feel good when I'm done and very exhilarated. Um, I don't want to feel broken down anymore. I'm, I'm done with that. Um, so, so, you know, most every morning I, I'll, I'll train. Um, and after that I start teaching and training clients. Uh, and then, and then in the afternoons I try to sit down and write um, when I can. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's cra crazy to, to still think that you, you obviously still, tr still train clients amongst uh, running workshops and writing books and doing podcasts it, and it's good for you, man. It keeps, it's how, it's how I learn. Like I can experiment on people. I wonder what happens <laughs> if they do this. <laughs> <laughs> do, does anyone still, um, uh, mentor you? Do you, do you still, uh, have mentors that you, you look up to and, and work with? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, again, I, my two biggest and, and, and they're, they're like huge gravitational forces for me because they're just a wealth of knowledge. I try to keep uh, in touch with Dan John and John Brookfield and, 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 and their philosophies. And I just try to watch how they live their lives. I've learned so much from just how they carry themselves and how they train, but more like the, to me, the biggest nuggets were how they carried themselves. Um, and that's, which is cool because that's not what I was looking for. Um, I was looking yeah. for training knowledge, but I got so much more. Um, and yeah. I would say that those are my two biggest uh, well, well springs that I go for. And then, and then sort of from a business perspective, do, do you model yourself after Dan John as well? Or is there someone else in a different area that you might look to for that? I will be completely honest from a business perspective. I've spoken with Dan John about business and stuff. Um, I am still, I call it finding my way. <laughs> so so I, I look around and stuff and, and, and it's almost like, I know there are tried and true business techniques for sure, but um, everybody has a different way of doing things still too. So I'm, I'm trying to find the best of what, what makes sense for me in the middle. Fortunately, I have a good, some good partners that also uh, help keep me in line and on track. Yeah. <laughs> but we're all, we're all, we're all still trying to find our way. Um, Cause the world's changing. I mean, everything's, it's a new frontier again with social media and like all the rules of business are changing almost daily. Well, a lot of the rules are not, not the, the core ones, but there's a yeah. lot of things that they change so fast. It's hard to keep up. It's true. It's very true. Now we we're, we're sort of almost come to the end of, of the interview. I've, I've got a couple of rapid fire questions. You don't have to answer them in rapid fire fashion you can take as long as you want no pressure but, but yeah i ask all my guests these uh so the first one is what's what's your all-time favorite nutrition or training or self-help book uh and uh, aside from your own books aside from uh, i'm glad you clarified um <laughs> oh gosh uh nutrition um you know Okay, let's skip nutrition. Um, training <laughs> book. Training book. I I, um, I like. Uh, uh, I don't. You know, you're probably familiar with some of uh, Pavel's uh, yeah. uh, so, books. So. Power to the People was a book that kind of changed my world, uh, opened my eyes a lot yeah. to a whole new frontier um, for me. Um, so, and really, all of those those early books that he wrote were just tremendous um, as far as knowledge goes. Great, great information. Um, nutrition wise, man, I've read so many things. Um, some of it's crazy, <laughs> but my favorite, I will tell you my favorite, favorite nutrition book is called nourishing traditions. Okay. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a cookbook that goes into science on what our ancestors used to do with food. And it's fascinating to me. Um, yeah. I, I recommend everybody has that book just cause it's neat. And, and a self-help book any in that genre? My Go to self help book for is honest. It's the Bible, man. I find so much comfort and and peace um, and strength from from reading that. That it, there's no other place I can turn to as far as a book goes that that has helped as much as that has. Yeah, awesome, awesome answer. Do you, do you have any quotes that you live your life by, or, or quotes that you say on a daily basis? Yes, uh, and I already said it. Uh, feels good to feel good. Um, <laughs> 
and uh, I I want to I I try to make the hard things easy. Um, so it's just uh, when it when it comes to training and in life, um, and this is something I've learned from John Brookfield is that if you develop, if you can if you can continually do the hard things when to the point where they're not hard anymore, um, everything's just easy. So. Um, when it comes to training and every other stuff, I, I just try to make the hard things easy. Yeah, that's that's great advice. What what do you do for fun on the weekends? On the weekends, honestly, <laughs> and this is sad. It's very sad, but I, I I love getting up on Saturday mornings and going to my studio to train. Um, yeah. Mostly because I know that I don't have to train anybody that day, and it's I'm just there, and I can stay as long as I want and just play around and goof off. And yeah. it's and, and I got no other commitment, you know. Typically, <laughs> well, that, that's tes- testament to that you're you're a man who who lives uh, lives by what he teaches. Oh man, I firmly believe that if you want to stay young, you got to move. <laughs> so yeah. I love move. I love move. Awesome. And I I think you might have already s- said this, but what's your favorite cheat meal? And I think it's probably just a big block of chocolate. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> My favorite cheat meal is. Um, well, now it's probably a toss up, but I love, love, love a gourmet, juicy hamburger with yeah. lots of cheese, bacon, and avocado. To me, yeah. that's it's just awesome. Uh, that's, that, that could, that's probably mine as well. That could be dessert for me. Um, <laughs> so I, I love that. Um, and then I have recently just have a crazy love for tacos as well. So either one of those will make me happy. Awesome. And if you had to pick one, squat or deadlift? Ooh, squat. Squat, easy. Uh, if you could be known for one thing, what would it be? <laughs> um, wow. You know, I, I don't know. Um, just, just somebody that maybe helped change the fitness landscape a little yeah. bit. Well, I think I think you've already uh, already done that. What's what's in store for the next twelve months for you? Oh man, we've got work. It's going to be a busy year. We've got workshops all over the world. It's amazing. Uh, it's it's so cool yeah, to I watch had, how. I had a look at your schedule before, and there was uh, all around the world. Yeah, it's uh, it's it looks like it's going to be a very exciting year. It's going to be exciting for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but so t- I, I just think that's, to me, it's miraculous because this all started from, like I told you from a, you know, a prayer and it was all, yeah, I was just trying to learn how to get out of pain and not feel broken anymore. Um, but it was just so powerful that I couldn't help but share it. And, and then other people just took to it, you know, and it just, it just, it just keeps growing. It's just so neat. Where's the, where's the best place for people to contact you? What's your preferred, uh, method of social media? And yeah, where, where do people find out more about you? So we have uh, our website's originalstrength.net. Um, we have a YouTube page also called Original Strength. Um, social media, we have an Original Strength Facebook page. Uh, we also have a press reset for 10 minutes uh, page that we, where we encourage anybody to get on there and, and talk about how they've pressed reset for 10 minutes. Um, we have, obviously, we have email and telephone. Um, I don't know our telephone number off the top of my head, but I know my <laughs> email address. My email address is tim at originalstrength.net. We also have uh, other email addresses as well, customer service uh, at originalstrength.net too. But um, it's okay. I'll, I'll put I'll put that in the the show notes, and if you want okay. your number included on there, I'll put that so so people can can find you more easily. Tim, it's it's been uh, fantastic, and I'm very grateful and honored to to have the the opportunity to sit down and uh, and talk to you. So it's been fantastic. Adam, thank you so much, man. Um, I really appreciate you wanting to talk to me. Um, and this is this has been fun. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you.